YouTube, how's it going? The Goat House is back. And today, I'm going over the sleepers of the 2020 NFL Draft, in my opinion. Looking at day three sleepers, some deep sleepers here in this video. Did a very similar video, but with overhyped players recently and a bunch of NFL Draft content on the channel. Plenty more to come. And we'll be live April 23rd, day one of the NFL Draft, uh, right here on YouTube. Instant predictions, reactions, all of it. We got you covered. So please join us for that. Please Join us on our channel by subscribing to both of them, actually. We have two here. Uh, 50K is our goal by the draft. And then follow that Twitter, always talking NFL and NFL draft. Have polls, answering questions, uh, keeping you guys updated there. So that's an absolute must follow. And you'll find a link to that as well as the podcast in the description and in the comments of every single video. Start with some running backs, shall we? Keyshawn Vaughn. Vanderbilt's back, I think, is a day three sleeper here, not getting talked about enough. I think he should be around. You know, it depends on how the running backs start, start to fall off the board, but right now I think he should be like an early fifth rounder. His talent level says better than that, but, you know, running backs that usually fall makes sense. But, uh, yeah, I think he should be talked about kind of in that range. And there's definitely guys in that range that are being talked about more. And I think he'll probably go around round six. And it was interesting, a lot of us thought he would come out last year. Uh, declare last year and, and I, apparently he tried to get some feedback and he was told by some scouts second or third round and he wanted to go and he went back to school because he wanted to go first round so you got to love that confidence you got to love that uh, about Keyshawn Vaughn you know it looks like as of now it didn't really work out for him but he's still that same back he's still a talented back hits the hole and very good after hitting the hole very elusive uh, another back that's a little more of a sleeper Javon Leak from Maryland Maryland actually has two running backs uh, in this class and the other one Anthony McFarlane who I'm a big fan of you could consider somewhat of a sleeper as well uh, maybe that would be a you know a day two sleeper perhaps uh, but Leak is yeah a deeper sleeper here I think should go around round six uh, and then it could be a seventh to undraft the free agent kind of given that uh, yeah he split time we didn't get to see a whole bunch of them his combine a little disappointing uh, you know, not super disappointing, a little disappointing. Uh, and, yeah, the position, the value of the running back position. So he could go 7 to undraft the free agent. You know, the combination of his size and the speed. You know, he's got that home run speed faster than you think. Uh, but, yeah, for not that many reps, not that much experience, he seems like a natural at the position. So he's definitely a deep sleeper to look out for. Uh, and then moving on to a couple of receivers. This might be the, my favorite one of the group here, Darnell Mooney, uh, the wide receiver from Tulane. You know, all this hype about the speed receivers, you know, the, it, that's what the NFL is turning into. You know, speed absolutely always dominated, but it really dominates now. Um, you know, we see the fastest players in football that also can play the game at a high level are dominating. And you see that's why there's so much bug, bu uh, buzz around Henry Ruggs uh, at the top. You know, guys like that, even K.J. Hamler. Well, this is that other version. He he reminds me of Henry Ruggs a bit, actually. You know, similar speed. He's a 4-3 guy, uh, you know, that, that deep threat. And he goes up and gets the ball, too, for an undersized guy, you know, undersized from Tulane. That's why he's going day three. But the tape, the talent, the speed uh, says he should go much earlier than maybe he will. You know, I think he should be a late four, fourth, early fifth guy. He may go. Uh, was thinking six, but there's actually some buzz really going around about him too. Uh, so he actually could go earlier in that six. But, uh, yeah, because Tulane undersized a bit, he may drop. Some teams may not be interested, but he's very talented. Uh, another receiver here, Tristan Jackson from Syracuse, uh, not being talked about enough. He will be a day three receiver, but still not being talked about enough. Uh, very smooth route runner, just a smooth receiver all around is the way I'd put it, you know. Uh, you know, very good footwork, very good routes, very good hands, really good after the catch, uh, you know, just – some at the combine, too, and look really smooth, all the drills. So that's how I would describe him. He's just a smooth receiver, and people are definitely sleeping on him. He was definitely – he was pretty productive for Syracuse as well. Uh, you know, I think he should go, you know, early five around there. Pretty much in the same – even though he's not a similar player, it's the same boat as Darnell Mooney there. So it could end up being a steal because of this receiver class, you know, somewhere in day three there later. So we'll see. But the order of the receivers, they're going to come off. It's going to be interesting. You know, some of these guys that we think maybe are sleepers, you know, it turns out that the NFL teams realize their talent and they could go maybe day two. It's very possible. So we'll see. Another receiver, though, Desmond Patton, Patman from Washington State, you know, bigger Bigger body receiver, but tested very well at the combine. Has some pretty good athleticism to him uh, for a bigger body guy. Um, yeah, and I, I think he should be kind of in that same boat there. You know, probably should be around around five. 
uh, but he'll probably be a late day three pick because there's just so many other receivers. And, you know, some do worry about maybe his route running. He didn't have a big route tree, a lot of just schemed up plays at Washington State. Maybe the separation. He does have the speed, though, at least the combine. But uh, he has those dominant moments, too. You just throw the ball up to him. Kind of that later round version of Chase Claypool, maybe, from Notre Dame, who could be an early day two pick. So, um, yeah, Claypool just has a little more to his game, obviously. But, uh, yes, yeah, some, someone you can compare him to. There's a lot of so many good receivers that are going to get drafted. You can kind of start comparing. This is the first round version. This is the mid round version. This is the late round version. So Patman's a guy I like late for sure. Uh, Josiah DeGuara uh, is a tight end. I'm way higher on than most people here, and you know I think he should be a fourth round pick. I think he's an instant impact guy. Uh, he can block. Uh, he can catch the ball. He's got the big playability. But uh, yeah, the route running really stands out. You know, he's almost got a route running and footwork of uh, of a receiver, really. Uh, and then you can possibly there's the talk about him playing some fullback if you need him to as well. So I see this guy in the field, uh, you know, every down. I really do, and I see an instant impact guy. So I think he should be around a, a round four uh, player. But he may go later. Why? Because, yeah, he doesn't have the, the height and the length that some of these other tight ends. And you do want the bigger body guys at the tight end position. You know, understand why. But if the guy can play, he can play. And I think he'll make an instant impact. He'll kind of be a sneaky player, sneaky target for quarterbacks on the field. Uh, next up, we got Alex Highsmith, the pass rusher from Charlotte. A very productive pass rusher, very consistent pass rusher, uh, and he had a very fun tape to watch too because he's got uh, you know the different pass rush moves to get to the quarterback. He was successful doing it, uh, but very impressive in the run game. Played a lot of teams that use a lot of misdirection, and he never really got fooled by them. Um, you know, and you see some you know nasty tackling, you know tackles and hits there in the backfield, just reading the reading the ball correctly. Uh, so I think he should go in the fourth. You know, there's a real lack of the pass rush group is actually growing on me. Everyone rips it. Uh, but it actually grew on me, but I still don't like the depth whatsoever. So, you know, given the depth of the, the class here, uh, there's a team that's still going to need, you know, they, they missed out on opportunity like they wanted to maybe early on. They're going to need a guy like Alex Highsmith here in the fourth round. Um, so I think it's it's very possible he can go up there. But uh, because he's small school, uh, because he played against, you know, weaker competition, and that's where he got most of his production, uh, maybe around the late, late fifth round there for him. Similar boat. Edge rusher here, it's going to be Travis Gibson, who had a very fun tape as well. A uh, flashy pass rusher that I think could fit the 4-3 or the 3-4, just like Alex Highsmith. Um, you know, pretty productive on, on his moves on, around the edge or cutting inside as well. Um, so I, pretty much the same area. You know, I think he should be because of the lack of depth of the pass rush, you know, and you only got a few chances to grab one in day three. This is one of them. You know, I think he should be late fourth, early fifth, uh, and then probably will go sixth. Yeah, some of these guys that just, you know, have the technique, have the traits, they didn't play the best competition, and, you know, maybe don't have the freakish traits, even though there, there's some that are there. So that's why maybe they'll drop a little bit, but definitely a guy I enjoyed his tape. Uh, next up, uh, Michael Walker. I talked about him in the linebacker rankings. I'm a lot higher on him. Yeah, I think everybody else, I think he should be around around five. Same thing with the linebackers. Uh, the lack of depth down the stretch, team should be fighting over guys like this. Uh, but there is not there is not much talk about him at all. Nobody's really a fan of him that I've seen so far but me. Pretty flashy tape. Yeah, he's got some things he's got to work on. But at the same time, Fresno State kind of used him as a pass rusher mainly this year when he's not a pass rusher. So kind of using him out of position just because he might be your best player kind of may maybe hurt it, hurt his draft stock a little bit. I think he should be a 4-3 outside linebacker, really good at sniffing out plays, getting in the backfield tackles for losses. Um, so that's definitely a sleeper to look out for. Another sleeper linebacker, Justin Sternad from Wake Forest, a very instinctive uh, linebacker, you know, always flying to the ball and pretty rangy as well. Uh, you look at his body and you look at some of his traits, you wish that, uh, you know, you wish there was a little more athleticism. You know, the combine was a little disappointing, so that can move him down a little bit. Uh, but very productive and very impressive when you watch him. So he should go around round five, but he'll probably, because maybe the just a little disappointing of a combine and the lack of s speed, he's not slow, but the lack of speed that you would want with his type of, um, you know, which I think will be a 4-3 outside linebacker. Uh, he'll probably go six, though, because of those things. Uh, and then we got uh, a couple defensive backs. Legereus Sneed, who played more safety, played some slot corner as well uh, for Louisiana Tech. I like as an outside corner. I mean, he has the body, the, the, yeah, the length, the athleticism to play corner, and he actually did play outside corner early in his career. So interesting what L.A. Tech decided to do, uh, you know, with – you know, with him, I guess, with their secondary, 
Uh, but I do like him. I like his potential at outside corner, uh, and I think he'll be a pretty good one. You know, he's going to be one that's going to take some time. He's going he's gonna to take some time maybe to be ready, uh, but an athletic freak, and they did have him working out with the corners at the combine, even though he played more safety and was listed at safety this year. So I think the NFL has got the same – plan in their head there they got that same idea and a team that's just looking for depth at corner but also want a guy for the future that you can develop get a little bit of a fun project this is that guy so he could be a sneaky out yeah, around fourth to early fifth guy because of those reasons uh, but some teams will view him risky some teams won't view him as switching the corner maybe they'll view him as he was a corner and they switched him for a reason so some teams not every it's, he's not for everybody he's not for everybody so he could Dropped to around round six, but definitely a sneaky guy to look out for there. Uh, and then another corner here, Reggie Robinson. I mean, you look you look at the kid. You, you see the, the athleticism combined with the size. You know, freakish dude. That's the guy you want to work with. That's another one of those corners you want to work with. You look at him, he passes the eye test. He looks like a first-round corner if you look at him. The play, um, yeah, you wish the play was a little better, but it, overall it was solid play, and he played against weaker competition there. Um, you know, so he could be another one, yeah. He probably will go later. I'm only saying that because there's not really any buzz, but I'm not hearing anything on him. You know, I'm just kind of gathering this from what I've seen on the tape and the idea of the upside of Reggie Robinson. Uh, but he could go. Teams could be thinking that too. Like we need a depth corner. Got a lot of upside. Let's take him around round five. So that, that's definitely a possibility there uh, for the Tulsa quarter, or cornerback there. Uh, and then we got one more here, and that's gonna be safety Geno Stone, who the first one on the list that I actually view as a day two guy, but I think will go day three. So that's why I do did borderline consider him a day three sleepers for this day three sleepers video. I think he should go third round. Even if somebody took him late second, I'd kind of be okay because I really like Geno Stone. He's very, very, very instinctive. That's the main thing. High motor safety. Why I think he'll go fourth, maybe a little later. I just don't see it. It's hard to see him getting into the fifth because he's such a good football player. But there, there are some reasons that he can drop, and I guess understandable reasons. Uh, and that's because he had a little bit of an underwhelming combine. That's, that's the minor reason. Yeah, you wish he was a little faster. You wish he tested well. He expected him to test better, a little better at least. Uh, but mainly he's going to be a zone safety. Uh, you know, So you, he strictly fits teams that need a safety uh, and are just looking to get a safety and are going to run more zone than man. So that really limits the amount of teams. But there are teams that run zone, really like his tape, that are really, really going to like him. But at the same time, they know. They know they can wait on him because there's only a certain amount of teams that will be that have that level of interest. So that is why he will probably be available as day three starts. But we'll see. You know, very good zone safety, very instinctive. I, you know, he played more free. I think he could play the strong though if you needed him to. Um, just kind of let him do his thing there. And you know, come up in the box, even deep, deep. He's better in the box. That's when he's, uh, you know, allowed to. He's able to trust his instincts. So fun tape from Geno Stone. Uh, definitely one that could be a day two pick. So this was mainly day three sleepers and deep sleepers. I will do a video uh, that's going to be just a couple days before the draft that I do every year. It's a my guys video kind of slash sleepers. So it's guys that I'm higher on than everyone else, which in my mind is sleepers. But I also usually have guys that I think will – um, you know, be bigger impacts. You know, they'll be big time impacts, and nobody really thinks they will. But they're kind of you know. So they're it's it's basically day one and day two sleepers type of video. So we got more of these definitely on the way. All kinds of content still to come. We're gonna be live April 23rd for the NFL draft right here on YouTube. Hopefully you can join us for that. That Twitter is an absolute must follow. Any link that you need is down in the description and in the comments of any video we have uh, but again got a whole bunch of content even though we're a week away got a whole bunch of content to get to so hopefully you guys are excited about that hopefully you can join us click that like button subscribe but that's gonna do it for this one let me know your sleepers down below in the comments thanks for watching goodbye